Thank you very much, Matthias. I see that you're following, which I really appreciate. Thanks a lot. Um, indeed, as, as Matthias just told us yesterday, uh, what we did is we discussed certain dynamics. Um, so we had some random probability measure PT. PT is some random uh, low concave probability measure. Um, and on our end, and we had its covariance matrix AT. This was the covariance matrix of PT. This was important for us. And what we showed, we ended up showing, we showed that um, that what you need is some bound on the covariance matrix. So we saw that if uh, um, for any uh, 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 initial condition P0 as a tropic low concave, if you know that for any initial condition, uh, the expected operator norm of AT is bounded by some, now I think it was one over eight, some specific number. If you know that, then this implies that uh, Psi N, so the worst of all uh, is the parametric, so the, the, the parametric constant of the P0 or, or, or the, the, the infimum of all of, uh, I suppose the constant over all is tropical long measures in our end is at least a constant times root of t. Okay, so this is what we showed that I mean for anything. Therefore, our goal um, from now on is just to show that the covariance matrix does not explode too much. Okay, we run the process still time, which is short time below one. Okay, after all, this is okay for any t up to one. Let's not go after one. Uh, and and um, we want to know that the covariance matrix does not really blow up, that's, that's our goal. This is what we're going to do today. So this was yesterday and today indeed what we're going to do, we're going to look how the covariance matrix grows. So we fix some number Q, at least three for some reason. And we consider, we look at um, the trace of 80 to the Q. Okay, and we know, we know this by, by gamma of T. And if you know that the trace is not too large then maybe you have some chance to show that the operator norm is not so large, okay? Right, so, so what we need, we need that uh, gamma t not too large for some appropriate q. Okay, and actually both remarks, so I'm going to incorporate in this lecture, simplification, it's a bit uh, obtained in some discussions that we had. The discussions were with uh, three people, Daniel Dadush, Ronen Eldan, and Joseph Lehe. Okay, so this is the anti chance work, but slightly present and different. Okay, so, so this is the quantities that we want to understand. The trace of A to the Q, how does it evolve? At time zero, we know that it equals N because it is a tropic. Now we'll have for, first, for I mean, advanced times, we'll have two types of controls. So first of all, in terms of uh, T, so really shows that the, uh, um, the change in gamma t in a small amount of time is at most um, two q square. I explain what, what these things mean. Times one over t times gamma t dt plus, plus a Martingale term. Um, okay, so in the, in the second bound, okay, the second bound will be not in terms of t, but in terms of um, so, okay, let me, here there is a constant which I don't know, it's not two, it's bigger than two probably. So Q square, and here I won't put a one over T, I just put Psi N minus two log N. This replaces T, one over T times gamma T dt. And again, I should just say plus up to, up to a martingale. Okay, um, good. So this, um, so, so what's written here? So Q square, you will see it follows from second derivative of T to the Q. Gamma T to the T is just uh, you compare it to your current situation and one over T um, and these things, th th these two things are bounds for what you know about the Poincare constant at time T. So because that PT was more log concave than E to the minus T X squared than the Gaussian. And therefore you know that this Poincare constant is at least T. That's one thing that you know. Second thing that you know about PT is that it is just some log concave measure, more log concave measure. Just look at measuring our n with some covariance. Ma no, uh, um, well, I wanted to write the operator law of 80. I'm not sure why, why something in my mind. 
and, and the, the Poincare constant is, is if it's not concave measured in Aurean, it's Poincare constant is always at, at most, at least, uh, sine square over the open it of the covariance matrix. This is something general for all of the measure by the field of psi n. Okay, so these are the two types of controls that I'm going to use. Okay, um, and we prove them later, but let's first see what are the consequences uh, of these uh, controls. So first of all, the corollary of A is going to tell us that, that the uh, uh, some power law grows for some quantity, uh, okay, uh, for uh, the expected norm of, uh, let I write the Schatten norm of, of of, uh, the top of of 80. So let's denote, okay, what's the shutter norm? The note, the, uh, the shutter norm of 80, I mean, everybody knows is the, it's uh, the trace of 80 to uh, Q to one over Q. It's a symmetric matrix, so it's gamma T to one over Q. Then the claim is that for any T uh, greater than S, if I look at the expectation of the Q norm at time T, Okay, so this can grow. I cannot say it's smaller than the uh, than the, the normal time s, but it does not go that badly. It goes like t over s to the two q. Okay, so let's prove this corollary. So, um, so for the proof, I need to understand the dynamics of uh, of the. Uh, uh, I need to understand the dynamics of 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 the operator of the q norm dt to of D of uh, gamma t to one over q. Um, so I'm going to um, use the Eto formula. The function uh, x to one over q is concave. So the data term is to our side. So the data term is negative. Um, and I can say that this is at most uh, so just uh, the derivative of this function, this is the derivative I think of <laughs> x one over q times d of gamma t plus a martingale term up to a martingale. Everything is up to a martingale. Up to a martingale is the new up to constant. Okay, um, very good. So why do I why do I don't care so much about up to martingales? Because if I take expectation, these, these things disappear. So the expectation. So this is, I mean, we call this is the operator norm, the, uh, sorry, the Q norm. So the expectation of, of, of the Q norm, D to DT of that, it, it's only uh, at the end of DT. Ah, no. Okay, so what is it? It is more, okay, let me do it more slowly. So D gamma T, we said it's most one over Q, gamma T, uh, one over Q times what was two Q squared times one over T, gamma T DT. Okay, plus Martingale. So if I take the expectation, then it grows, then I have a, a bound. So that I get two Q times uh, uh, one over Q minus one. I don't know what I have today. I cannot differentiate one over Q minus one. So I get a, a, a two Q times uh, the Q norm of AT because these two things together give you the, give me a gamma t to the one over Q. And expectation and 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 this means that the growth so this is the, the simplest uh, of these that we know. So this means that if I look at um, over T so this means that um, um, so if I look at uh, the logarithm, okay, let me do it. So the logarithm of, of, of this expectation d to dt is at most uh, t to q over t. Okay, good. So this means that, that if, I, if I look at the, the, uh, the expectation time t over time s, And this is indeed the most the integral from S to T of D of two Q over may, maybe R dr, which is uh, log of of T over S to the power of two Q. Okay, so this is what what I claim. So that's a very nice corollary of 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 the first bond that we have. So it does not go too widely these things, and this is 
really a new ingredient in, in, in the paper by Chen. The corollary of B, this was kind of known before. So what it says is that the basic estimates that we had from yesterday, so the fact that you know that if, uh, if you have, um, if you know that up to time T, the operator norm does not go too much, then you have a bound for, for, for sign. This may be reversed up to log n. We already saw yesterday that this is not completely optimal and you already lose a log n when you use this step. So all you can hope in the reverse statement that, that will be correct up to log and this is incorrect. So the color of B is that the, the basic estimate from yesterday is, is tight up to log n. So what does it tell us? It tells us that there is a, let me inflate a small universal constant. Um, because it's not true for large. Such that if you have any t, uh, if t is large, smaller than, than psi n square uh, over log n. Okay, so this is the time, let me write it a bit more clearly. This is the, the, the time where things are still okay. Then the, and this is by the way, a small number, okay? This is smaller than one by, by, by far. Then the expectation of the operator norm is, is very, is, is under control. So it does not explore at all. Let me put it in three. This is what I need. And similarly, uh, and uh, if you look at the Q norm, it will be at least three times N to one over Q. It's the sum of diagonal values to power one over Q. So it should be N to one over Q. Okay, so let, let us prove this corollary. So first of all, uh, let's recall that, that the support of, of PT is contained in the support of the initial measure, which I assume to be in some ball. I put into the five, I could put scroll of them, but I put into the five for some reason. Uh, so this implies that the covariance matrix is never less than n to the 10. Okay, so this not n to the 10. And therefore it suffices to show So we want the expectation, and we just show that the probability uh, that the operator norm uh, at, at the time that for t smaller than t, this is true for any t smaller than t, of course. Even the supremum, you know, let me even be more daring, supremum over. Okay, right, never mind. I don't need it, but it's true for any. Uh, let me put a little t here. Okay. Um, okay, um, no, I want it to be T, like the capital T, and it's, this is the way I think about it. So capital T is like a fixed constant and, and okay. So, so what, 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 what we need to, we have to prove that, that the operator norm, uh, the probability that it is at least uh, two, it is very large. Uh, 20 maybe I want to prove. 10, okay, yeah, okay, this is enough. Now, how do you prove such a bound that with very good probability, uh, it does not it does not go above two? So for this, we introduced a stopping time. What is a stopping time? It is thunder, okay. Uh, consider the stopping time, tau. Tau is the first time where the operator norm reaches two. Okay, if we run the process and then at some random time, uh, um, um, let me do it, uh, the supremum where it's still smaller than two. It's a random time, it hits the value two. Maybe it happens, maybe it never happens. This is a stopping time. Stopping time, it means that the event where tau is at most five, depends only on the history on what happened before five. Okay, you look at, at the, the development, you don't see the future and you can know when you should stop. Okay, what's so good about stopping times that are adapted? It, what, what's, what, one thing which is good is the fact, um, which is called, I mean, in, so in books it's called the optional stopping theorem. In discrete time, it's called, I think, Wald's lemma. This is how I learned about it. Um, but what it says is that if you have a martingale, 
and you stop it, uh, then also the stop margin, the stop force is a margin here. So well, how do you stop a margin? Again, you look at M at the time T minimum with tau. Okay, this is minimum with tau. Uh, so this is still a margin here. Actually, this is true without any integrability assumptions, it's true in general, because it's a bounded. Okay. Uh, I'm, are you sure it's stopping the time that we define? It depends on the future. No. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Okay. The first time when it hits one. The first time when it hits one, if it exists. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so why, why is it true that when you stop a Martin, you still get a Martin girl? So at discrete time, it's really just you know, one line proof basically, but let's just view it intuitively. So you have your Martin girl, and then at some point, you know that the expectation at future time is present time, and then at some point you just stop it, okay? So, um, well, I mean, uh, 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 the, the expected, so if you're below here, this is S and this is D, what's the expected value to future time? It can, you cannot make money from a stock which is on average zero, so kind of it has to be still a market. That's intuitively, but I mean, the proof is very, very simple. Okay, so very good. Now let's take uh, Q to be 40 log n. Did they say that Q is integer? If so, then let's put this. I'm not sure I said that. I don't need it. And let's consider the stop process. So I look at gamma t, what I, the process that I uh, like and investigate. And I look at xt, which is you stop it at time tau. So you stop an operator norm, which is two. Okay. Um, now we know that, let's recall that, that, that uh, I think we call it B. By B, we know that D of gamma T was at most Q square times psi n minus two, the operator norm, times gamma T dt, plus a margin error, plus DMT where MT is a margin girl. Okay, so what is the meaning of this uh, stochastic differential uh, jargon? This means that gamma T minus gamma S, it is smaller than the integral from S to T of what's written here, uh, A of R operator on dr, uh, plus M of T minus M of S, okay? Now, if you stop, now I want to move from gamma to X. If you stop the process, what's going to happen? I'll have roughly the same condition, but the, the, the integral will be from S minimum t tau to T minimum tau, and, and, and this thing will still be a margin girl. So, so, so what I get is that dxt, now I switch to this more convenient uh, stochastic differential formalism. It's more than what? Q square uh, psi n minus two. I don't need to operate too long because in that integral I stop when I reach two, so it will be just absorbing the constant. And gamma t equals xt. I mean, in, in, inside this integral, because it did not stop yet, uh, times x t d t plus Martin girl. Okay, and therefore we take the expectation, and the Martin girl is not not with us anymore. So the expectation of x t changes at the rate which is at most q squared sine minus two times the expectation of x t. So it goes exponentially. Uh, and uh, the expectation of, of x uh, and for any, okay, now let's use for any t smaller than t, which is science, small constant, science square over log n, the expectation of x t is at most uh, the time zero, so n is, is, is x zero, times exponential of some constant, Q is log n, I should have put in earlier. Let's let it put Q is 40 log n. So this is log, log square n. So what log square n times psi n minus two times t. Let it put even capital T. See, just, just louder. But wait, t is, uh, I can adjust this so that the term in the exponent would be at most log n. So this is at most n times uh, e to the log n, which I think is, n squared last time I checked. Okay, so consequently, um, so the expectation of, of xt is the most, okay, so that, that, that this is most n squared, but this is at least what is the probability, so it, suppose that we stopped, 
okay? If we stop before time t, it means that uh, uh, the operator norm of, 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 of the matrix is, is at least two. So one eigenvalue is at least two. And therefore the, Q, the sum of Q powers of the eigenvalues is at least two to the 40 log N. Okay, and I think that, that, that this is at least, uh, okay, so I get the probability that tau larger than T times N to the 20, I hope. Okay, and therefore the, the, the probability that we stop is very small. The probability there exists T in zero T where the operator norm is larger than two, is smaller I get one over N to the 18. So we prove what you want that. And, and, uh, and similarly, so the operator norm is small and, and similarly, uh, and also the probability that the Q norm This thing is the least two of n over q is also the same as one over n to 18, and, and we completed the proof. Okay, so we have these two corollaries. Okay, we know two things. First of all, corollary, the first corollary was we have a power law growth of the LQ norm, the Shutton Q norm. Second corollary is that up to this time, which is tight, up to log n, it's tight. You know, the operator norm does not grow, stays at two or three. Okay, and for large constant, it grows. Good, now let's prove chance theorem using these two corollaries. Uh, do I need to say anything beforehand? No, I think I'm okay. Is there something in the chat? Should I look at them? Uh, Emmanuel, are you sure? Do you have gamma t inside the integral gamma r? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. But if, uh, thank you. That's it. Presumably, yes, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Emmanuel, for following. Now, uh, we're going to bootstrap for Psi n. Okay, because we know that, um, so let's, we know that T0, the time Psi n square over log n is kind of the sharp time. Okay, so that you know that up to this time, this is much smaller. This is, I need it to be smaller than one, one over 100, it's okay. Um, so that we know that up to this time t, the expectation of the operator norm is at least uh, three and also the Q norm. Okay. Now, uh, now we want to look at so you want to increase T0, it's a bootstrap. You want to say T0 is the optimal thing and then, ah, suppose I can continue a bit further. So what do we know for T, which is larger than T0? You know, we have this power law thing. So we know that the expectation of AT Q, I didn't say what is Q yet, is at most T over T0 to the two Q, times the expectation at time T0, which is at most uh, three, no, it's not three, uh, n to one over Q, okay? Now, um, we fix some larger number. These are fixed and to be, to be, to be determined. Um, and I'm going to look at the expectation of the integral from zero to T1 of the operator norm, okay? So if we want to do bootstrap, we want to show that there is a larger amount of time, such that this integral is at most one over eight. Okay, and then it means that we can, okay, we can pull ourselves out of the swamp like the Minhausen story. Okay, so what's this integral? So this is um, at most or equal to the integral uh, up to time zero, and it, Time one, I'll, I'll even replace it with, with the uh, with the L um, Q norm, the Shutton Q norm. So it's only larger. Okay. The first thing is at most uh, so T zero at most one over hundred, so it is three over one over hundred. Uh, and here, what would I get? I know that in this range, eight is at most T over T zero to the two Q times n to one over Q. So the maximal value would be 
T1 over T0 to the 2Q times n to the 1 over Q, this is the maximal value. The length of the interval, it is smaller than T1. It's T1 minus T0, but it's not more than T1. Very good, very good. Now let's see if there is some, yeah, um, is, is, so is there some uh, 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 reason to, to expect a bootstrap? So can we take T1 much larger than T0, not just a constant, much larger, and still have the integral at most one over eight? Let's see, let's see. So remember that all of our terms are small numbers, okay? This is nothing. So you want this thing to be at most one over 10, maybe one over, I don't know, 15. Okay. Uh, we have this T1. T1 is a tiny number. If you would think that the optimal time T0 is one over root n, so this is what we saw until November. Um, well, then uh, T, T1 could be one over n to the third or something, and it could absorb these things. Okay, so T1 over T0 to some suitable Q, and this thing could be Small could be I mean, These are large. These are this is, this is larger than one. This is larger than one. But they could be into a small power if you are good enough. And, and T one would be I don't know a bit, a bit above not one over root of n, but one over n to the power zero point forty nine. Okay. So this is the this is the game. This is the basic idea of the bootstrap. So let's see what is what is the equation that we need for for, for T one. So what we need we need that ah I forgot the very important factor of three. My apologies. Okay, so what we need, we need that, that this thing, we need T1 to satisfy, we need to find T1, uh, such that T1 to the 2Q times N to one over Q uh, T1 equals maybe one over 30. Yeah, I think it will be good enough because 13 of, no, one over 50. So yeah, one over fifty. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So this is what we need. How would you? So, so it means that uh, okay. So t one to two q plus one over uh, 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 t zero to the two q uh, uh, should be roughly uh, uh, n to minus one over q. Let me just put, move it here. This is what we need. T zero to the two q. Okay, and if you have uh, uh, so, uh, so T1 should be a small constant times n to the minus one over Q, 2Q plus one, uh, T0 to the 2Q over 2Q plus one. Okay, and for this choice, uh, we know that the integral is more than one over eight. And this is true for any initial, uh, initial local controllability measure, which is isotropic. So this means by the basic estimate from yesterday that psi of n is at least a constant root of t1, okay? So which is, uh, okay, which is up to a constant uh, n to the minus one over two q, two q plus one times t0 to the Q over two Q plus one. I hope that, okay, I won't bring it there. Or also plug in uh, T zero, substitute T zero. So, uh, and, and what you get is that, so Psi N is louder than what? So let me, uh, N minus one over uh, two Q, two Q plus one. T zero was Psi N square up to a log. So Psi N two Q uh, over, uh, 2q plus one, and there is a log, one over log, one over log n uh, q over 2q plus one. And now look at this beautiful bootstrap. So we can bound psi n from below by a smaller power of psi n. That's very nice, okay? So this implies that uh, 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 psi n uh, is at least what? So I'm going just to erase, so I j just need to erase all this q, 2q uh, minus one. Is going to be at least uh, what some constant over log n. So I'm okay. To the, so I'm just erasing this q, two q plus ones from everywhere. So I move it here, and this means that I have to write it. So uh, to the q. So c to the okay, and the c to the q, the constant here is absorbed in this constant. So there is also c to the two q plus one, but this is enough here. 
times n to minus 1 over 2q. So we already proved that psi n is bound from below. So this is true for any q, okay? This is, we didn't choose q. This is true for any q louder than 3. Okay, so you know, this is that we have some lower bound on psi n, which is better than any polynomial. If you use 1 over 100, you get that psi n is at least n to minus 1 over 200. This is very good. And the optimal choice, I think it was around the root of log n, or maybe with log, ah, I think it was a, 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 a root for us. I think root log n is then log log n. Okay, so something like, um, yeah, 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 because you want to cancel that. Right? So, a bit slightly smaller than root log n. And this means that, uh, so what would you get? You get, uh, so from here, uh, okay, so let me know what you're going to get. You're going to get this is another a constant, e to the minus a constant, root log n with the log log n inside. Okay, so let's let just let's verify that I didn't make it. So uh, this is e to the minus log n. Uh, over Q. So it's e to the minus uh, uh, log n over this thing. So uh, uh, log n over this thing, then uh, uh, root log n and log goes up. This is good. And the other term would be this times log log. And this is absorbing that thing. Okay, yeah, so you're fine. Very good. So this finishes the proof of, of, of Chen's theorem. But, but uh, we are not done because it did not prove for you. Uh, Two bounds. Okay, so we still need to prove these uh, two types of control, these uh, A and B, these uh, two types of control. Okay, so that, that this is what remains. So let's let's recall something. So so far, I didn't discuss cell moments. Okay, now let's recall from yesterday. So what we say is, so we, we said that the evolution equation of, of, of AT, so the, uh, uh, the IJ coordinate was what? It was the scalpel of Xi IJ DWT minus uh, AT square uh, IJ DT. This was the evolution where Xi IJ was the integral over Rn of x, xi. So you just some, some sub moment of uh, centered. It's important that it's centered. Uh, this is the bar center. Okay, so this is a centered, uh, this is centered. Okay, now um, we need to understand the evolution of gamma t. And here's there is some computation, which I'll explain. So let's denote the eigenvalues of, of a t by 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 uh, lambda one up to lambda t. Okay, then uh, for any reasonable f, that will only take f which is a power. If I look at the sum of f of lambda i, this changes as follows. So this equals uh, one half times the sum psi i j square. And you have f prime lambda i minus f prime lambda j over lambda i minus lambda j dt. When there is, and there is other things that are not so definitely not terribly important. So minus f prime. I mean, okay, this this is this is fine. Plus margin uh, And 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 xi j is in the basis of the eigenvectors. Okay, this is the basic way that we have to work. So let's let's I, I just sketch the proof because of computation. Um, so basically, you use this formula and the Ito formula, and you should also use uh, uh, some linear algebra statement about second derivatives. So what's the lemma? This lemma, I thought it's kind of similar to the Hadamard perturbation lemma, but apparently it's uh, it's called the, the Daletsky-Klein lemma. 
451. So what it says that if you have two symmetric matrices, A and H, symmetric matrices, if you look at, uh, if you apply uh, F to all the eigenfunctions, look at the trace of A of F plus A epsilon H, this is the following Taylor expansion, the trace of course times zero, plus epsilon times trace of F prime H, F prime A times H. And the term which is interesting for us is epsilon square over two times the, the following uh, expression. So this is the Hadamard product. And there is, okay, O of epsilon square, where, uh, so G is just F prime, uh, this is Hadamard product or Schul product. People have two names for this. So just entry wise of the matrix product and, and G prime, G, G, G1 of A is the matrix with entries um, lambda I minus lambda J, no, G of lambda I minus G of lambda J over lambda i minus lambda j in the basis in the OB of eigenvectors of A. Okay, so this, 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 if you just do this with the Eto formula, you get what you want. Okay, now let's prove the bounds A and B. Okay, so, so let's write, uh, D gamma T, so it's, it's, you know, it's a little process, delta T DT plus some, okay. I write the Martingale term explicitly for the last time. So what we need, we need to prove, so we don't care about the Martingale term, we only need to prove that delta T, okay, it is at most Q square times two things, let me put the minimum. So either uh, uh, um, one over T, or this uh, uh, psi n minus two times the operator norm, right? This is this is what we we time gamma. This is what we want to prove. Okay, this want to prove this almost surely. So for now there is no uh, boundary motion. We want to prove a deterministic uh, statement about long wave measures. Okay, and what do we know about this long wave? Measure? Let's let, let me denote this thing by uh, one over kappa. Okay, and the observation is that the Poincaré constant, here I put a constant, the Poincaré constant of the spectral gap of PT is at least kappa. So why? Okay, because more of the concave and you no, know, more of concave than one over the Gaussian. And uh, well, and the, the, the second bound is true for any, uh, just to find uh, the measure just because of the definition of psi n. Okay. And the definition of uh, psi n. Okay, so what do we know about delta t from the computation? Okay, so from now on, all, expect, all integrals, all expectations just look at this measure. This is the integral of my expectation, nothing about the point. So delta t, um, so we need to look at the function f of x, which is x to the q. So what we get is that it's at most um, one half. Okay, I do it in, um, let me, okay. So let me write it this way. Um, so this is psi ij square. And here I, I want to put lambda i to the q minus two. Why is that times q, q minus one? Uh, why, why is it true? Um, this is true. So in, in, in principle, I should have put in just Q, the first derivative and here Q minus one, but this is true since if you look at what was written here previously, by the way, uh, if I equals J, you use the limit value. I should have said it earlier. Maybe I should write it. Um, this is more as an, uh, you know, this is the average of the second next derivative and the next derivative is, with a convex function because Q at least three. So this is at most this plus this over two. And if this is privileged equality for two numbers. So here I should say in the computation that, 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 um, yeah, so, so if this 
if i equals j then this means the second derivative is clear I think. okay um now yeah so so, so just replace that this this very uh, uh, reasonable maneuver and now i want to understand um this so this is sum over j i want to understand this thing a bit better okay um so let me first the comp i mean the notes xi ijk to be the uh, uh, expectation of uh, xi xj xk where x is distributed according to uh, uh, pt uh, the center version of pt okay so this means that xi i is just these are just the coordinates of xi ij okay so this is this is this is xi j k and also if let's also group them in a matrix uh, so set also xi i to be the matrix these are all symmetric things so this is symmetric matrix okay and if you what it means is this is the expectation of x i times x tensor or x this is a matrix okay and what you see here this is actually exactly the uh the operator norm of this matrix if you can see that so that the uh trace of it's symmetric matrix of trace of xi i squared that's what we have here okay so we want to show this thing is small how would we show that, that this thing is small? Let's first work with only with this term. So what is the trace of xi i square? The trace of xi i square, so it's the trace of xi i expectation x i x tensor x. This equals the expectation of x i times xi i uh, x x. Now this is centered. Okay, so I can do Cauchy Schwartz and get x i square times the variance of x i x x okay now this equals root of lambda i because we are in the basis of uh, 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 um, we're in the, in the basis of eigenvectors and here i'll apply the Poincare inequality okay so by the Poincare inequality the variance is at most there's a root here of course the one is at most one over kappa okay times the expectation of the gradient of this function, and guys, this function is, is two psi i x. Okay, so, so, so what I get here, I'm getting that this is, um, um, okay, so this is uh, um, two square root of lambda i over root of kappa, and you're going to have the expectation of, of the trace of, of, if you think, so this, I mean, uh, the two goes out, um, and, and, how, what's the expression of, of some, some linear operator? It's the trace of the covariance matrix, AT, with this square. Okay, so consequently, if I look at this, so I need to bound this sum. So remember, lambda IQ minus two, trace of xi I square. Let me just plug in what I know. This is at most the sum. So I, I, I okay, so this is two over root kappa. I just plug in the bound for xi, right? so this is at most two over root of kappa, the sum of this minus three over two, right? Because of this root lambda i over the 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 eight xi square, which is also I can write as the sum of uh, uh, lambda j xi i j k square, if I want, uh, uh, j and k range from one to n. Now, um, people, if, if you follow, just just look at this Cauchy Schwartz. So 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 um, so we say that this is at most um, lambda i to the q to one over q, okay, times root of what's remain from this q minus three is lambda i to the q minus three times lambda j xi i j k square, okay. So this is really a a very clever Cauchy Schwartz from Lemma 11 in your uh, 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 paper. So, uh, and, and, and now use the fact that uh, if you go up these two things together, um, if you look about on, on this thing, this is at most x to the q minus two plus y to the q minus, q minus two, that's driven inequality. So that's this what? Two root of, of kappa, gamma q, uh, half. So uh, 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 
I'm going to get gamma t, root of gamma t, times what's written here, so this will be the sum of lambda i to the q minus two, i j k, psi i j k square, and this is exactly the same as what we started with. This is just the sum of lambda i to the q minus two, uh, trace of psi square, okay? So I get another little bootstrap. So therefore, these two things are in different powers. So I'm going to get the, uh, the sum of lambda i q minus two trace of psi i square is smaller than four over kappa times gamma t, okay? And therefore, so delta t was Q over Q minus one over two times whatever written here, so over four over kappa uh, 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 gamma t, which is, okay, so, so we prove, uh, so we prove the two bounds, even with, um, even with uh, um, Q, Q minus one in place of Q square. Okay, so the miracles in the last quick transitions are due to, this is lemma 11 in the chain. Okay, so we finished the proof. I just want to say uh, one of the things that first of all, I'm very happy to see this kind of flow of ideas between mathematicians and statisticians and computer scientists, and I hope that more results will come out of these uh, symbiotic relations. And one, one last thing, so yesterday there was not enough time for questions, uh, and, and, and some people that wanted to ask questions were not able. So if possible, I would like Matthias to allow at least one person, which is Vital Milman, to make remarks uh, during the question session, during the time for the question. Okay, but, but I'm done. Thank you very much.